is up fellow Cybertronians, welcome back to the Ian02 channel. My name is Ian, oh, Optimus Prime, I'm sorry. But anyway, today we are reviewing Megatron. Okay, what's up fellow Cybertronians, today we have the Studio Series Gamer Edition uh, Megatron, right? the second Voyager class to come out of this line. He's number four, after Optimus Prime, uh, Barricade, and Bumblebee. So, yeah. On the outside, well, this guy looks really good. Alright, awesome looking Megatron. Accurate looking Megatron. Nice pictures of Megatron. And we can see Megatron in the window. But I've heard that there are a lot of issues with this figure. So let's not waste any time, open him up, and get him out of the box. So here we have Megatron out of the packaging and he looks, well on his own he looks good, yeah, accurate version of Megatron but there's already things that I would like to complain about. So uh, I think I have more, I think I will have more bad things to say about this figure than good things. Right? I mean the good things is it looks really good like all the Gamer Edition figures but like most of them, they are riddled with issues. Aside from Optimus Prime, I, I kind of hate all the rest of them. So let's start off with things that I want to complain. First, the things that stands out to me is this arm cannon. Right? So yes, uh, it is accurate. But one thing that is not accurate, I feel, is that the gap between the arm and the arm cannon is a bit too large. Right? I don't like seeing this huge section as a connection. I think that is really weird. Uh, it doesn't look seem right. And it just pegs into the arm like this. So I'm wondering why they had to raise this uh, hole and not just let this peg into the arm of the figure, considering that it is hollow on the inside. So if we could plug into the arm without having that raised uh, peg hole or whatever you call it then I think it will look a lot nicer uh, number two well the first is one of the first things I noticed when I got him even before out of the box and that is that head is really tiny I mean this is a Voyager class figure and already his stature feels tiny his whole body feels tiny but the head seems extremely small even though it's sort of nicely sculpted but that's because it's so small there's not much you can look see or there's not much to show off anyway he just has a very big frowny face but anyway that's my second complaint next thing is this this giant maze while it does look cool why does it only peg into the bottom of his hand it seems so out of place having having hold you to hold that giant mace just by the bottom here. Doesn't look right. Uh, you would I would expect something better from the studio series. If you were going to hold a mace in one hand, I would expect this to be a lot shorter or smaller. If you wanted it to be huge, I think you should be holding it somewhere around here. About this length would be nice, right? Because this makes sense. Right, over here like this does not make sense to me. It looks really weird. Okay. So those are my complaints. So far. So far. And the next, what I do every time I get a figure out of the box is that I just fiddle around with it. See how it plays. And yeah, I encounter that issue that everybody has been talking about. And that is the peg behind the knee which only gives him this much of knee articulation. And it is really weird that they would do something like this. This kind of sums up my feelings about the uh, Gamer Edition series so far. 
from looks, they all look great. But once you start fiddling around with them, you start to find a lot of things wrong here and there. But anyway, that's what I have to say about this figure so far. Articulation wise, uh, it's a Voyager class. So I think it has all the articulation that it needs to have. Head is on a ball joint. Arms can go up and down, all around. It, it, he even have a elbow that can bend really far. And if you need more, you can increase it even more like this. Okay. Uh, his arms comes out. I don't really know what for. Maybe you can plug in the other weapons. From the other uh, Game Boy Edition figures. As it stands, this guy doesn't come with anything extra. Next, his feet is fine. Can't go wrong with the legs. You got a waist swivel, no ab crunch. Uh, you have that horrible knee joint. You have some tie rotation. Uh, toe articulation, up and down. A little bit left and right movement. And this thing can act as a heel for, for him to balance. And yeah, that's about it for the articulation. So everything is there. It's just the horrible knee joint. Something, you know, you would not expect in a Voyager Studio Series figure. The name of Studio Series seems to be being dragged through the mud these days. But anyway, that's it for the articulation. Let's get him into his vehicle mode and see what other problems we can find. Okay, so for transformation, I'll plug all the weapons. We will start by folding in his arms. Next, we will do his legs first. What you want to do is flip up these two tracks. It can be quite tough. So flip up one. One. Two. Okay. The back section can be folded all the way up. What you want to do now is flip in his legs. Get them inside. And then we can close this panel up. Do the same for the other leg. Go down the back section. Flip in his foot. Close up the panel. And you can turn them in like this. And for now, we are done with the legs. Next, go to the back. Flip this out. flip out his chest as well. You can flip it downwards and then fold it outwards like this. Okay, we don't have to do anything to his head, but if you notice over here, so you can see that this arm will flip to the front, this arm is going to flip to the back. Okay. Yeah, and this always comes out. So let's do this, flip it to the back. There are some pegs here that we can get things aligned. There is also another peg under the arm here. Peg that in. And that's one arm done. The next arm, we are basically going to use the both joints of the arm, like this. And Fold it in. These two pegs will go into these two pegs over here. So try to align these two with this one, these two over here. Okay. Once they are done, press them in. And it looks like this. Next step, turn this around. And now we can start folding in the legs. So the legs just close up, get in a line, and 
pack everything together. And this part can be very annoying, so just slowly get everything packed in. And this is basically it. All we have to do now is attach the barrel and stick the mace on the back here. And we have Megatron in his tank mode. Okay, so here we have War for Cybertron Megatron in his tank mode. And to me, this looks really ugly. Uh, something about the shape just doesn't seem like it's right. Something just looks wrong about it. It kind of looks like an omelette to me. A Cybertronian omelette with a turret and a met metal mace sticking out at the back. I don't know, that shape. It's just not very tank-like. I, I have. It doesn't seem like what it looks like in the game. Although my memory could be a little bit fuzzy. I haven't played the game in a long, long time. But anyway, uh, yeah, it has no wheels, nothing. It can't roll. I know it's supposed to be a hover tank, but you know, some wheels would have been nice. Uh, turrets don't move. It's everything is packed in. So yeah, it's tank mode. It's just a brick. It's not even a good-looking brick. Uh, yeah, this uh, pretty bad tank mode or an alt mode, from my opinion. Anyway, that's it for the vehicle mode. Okay, so that was Megatron in his tank mode. And yeah, it was a disappointing tank mode. But things are about to get worse once we start comparing him to the other figures. So to start, th to start things off, this is the original War for Cybertron figure. And this guy is a Deluxe class figure. And if we stand them side by side, I don't think there is much difference to be honest this guy is such a good deluxe class figure despite lacking some articulation here and there even then he comes up just a head shorter than the new voyager class so that is uh, really disappointing uh, the voyager class does not seem like he's up to par yes he's bigger than the original toy but not by much but anyway size becomes a bigger issue once you put him side by side with Optimus Prime from the same studio series line and to me Optimus Prime was the first and by far the best figure from this line the only one which I think has no problems and he is so much bulkier than Megatron even the size of Optimus Prime's head is a lot bigger than Megatron and I don't know if you have played the games but I do recall Optimus Prime getting his ass kicked by Megatron throughout almost the entire game. So how can you justify this tiny stature compared to the big and bulky Optimus Prime? This Megatron is a real disappointment. I mean, just look at the difference in size. You wouldn't believe that this they are both same price and they are both Voyagers. How can this guy be so small? That's a really bad one from Hasbro, I think. But anyway, I'm not done yet. This is the Studio Series 102 Rise of the Beast Buzzworthy Bumblebee Optimus Prime And he is also a Voyager And my god, the difference in size is just insane I mean Look at that It's so bad What excuse do they have? Is it because of the big maze? Does the maze take out that much of plastic that they couldn't make Megatron bigger? I don't know what excuse they can give, but yeah, this guy is a real disappointment in terms of size. So yeah, size-wise, this Megatron is way too small. And it's disappointing because why go through the effort of making him so detailed, so accurate, and yet so out of size. Because if, I mean, if the scale is wrong, then that's what everybody's going to see. And they're not going to really pay attention to the detail once you see that huge difference in the size of Megatron as compared to the other figures. So yeah, I think this is a really bad one. It's continuing a trend of bad Studio Series figures that we've been getting. And it's really sad because, you know, Studio Series was meant to be the premium line 
for the scale and accuracy. It's really disappointing. So that's about it for my review of this figure. If I was to give him a rating, I think this will probably be the lowest rating I've given so far. I'll probably give it like a 5 out of 10. I can still say that his details look good. The figure does look good on its own. But with all the, articu the articulation problems and the major difference in height as compared to Optimus Prime, which is supposed to be his opposition. In the same line of figures that they got this wrong, it's kind of an embarrassment if I don't usually regret purchasing figures, but I think this is one I would say I regret purchasing. But anyway, do let me know what your opinions are in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe and all that. And I will see you guys in the next review. Goodbye.